So hello, <laughs> second attempt to take this uh, one shot. <clears throat> so um, uh, today I want to introduce you uh, into the Max code we developed over the last few months. This is the Open UC2 or UC2 5D or XYZ. Um, so this right now is a, a prototyping device, but uh, it may look very similar to what you're uh, doing by means of uh, producing 3D printed parts, uh, CNC machining, or even uh, by a similar version from uh, UC2 or Open UC2. And um, I already opened uh, the most important part. So this whole microscope uh, can move around the sample. So you can have different samples here. So multiple plates, um, also special adapters for, for example, um, petri dishes, or um, also um, plates for different um, standard glass slides from, from microscopes. So you just put them in here. And um, the microscope consists of XYZ um, motors. So you have the Y, which is the short axis, the X, which is the long axis, and then also two motors to move the sample up and down. So this way, um, the op optics always stay uh, in the same position, which is nice because then the moving around, uh, it's less affected by thermal variation. and um, it's not followed by the idea that you have cubes as we used to have it, uh, or still used to, um, do have it with the, um, the cube system, but it's still modular. So for example, this here is a, a module that still follows the same um, form factor by means of 50 times 50 millimeter. I just now shifted inside the slot here. So this is an, an open hole, so open source still remains. And so the, the one module we're using here right now that's the imaging module. So you have a camera, in that case, a Dahan camera uh, with an IMAX uh, 226 sensor from Sony. Uh, there is a CCTV lens in there, something like this here. Uh, and then a folding mirror so that you have infinity path. Then here you could just uh, stack different modules. So this is just a two-story microscope, but it can go faster, uh, higher. And so um, the, the key idea here is then that the optics are always the same. So this is just um, in place. And then um, the sample moves around. And so we have different options to uh, move the sample around. And so um, here we have um, also well, lots of wires. This is a development version, as I said, so um, might look different in your case, a bit more cleaned up. Uh, we have end stop sensors or uh, switches so that you know, okay, uh, this is or uh, zero, 00 from the sample here and also here for the y-axis. Then we have a, a light source that's right now here, which can also be swapped. So this is not fixed right now so that they can move it around. And you can also have um, a, a little camera so that you can spot stuff on top of this um, microscope. So like select um, and go to the feature of your sample. And then um, all the different motors um, and also the end stops are controlled and read out with the UC2 ESP uh, board that also runs the same uh, firmware that's open source and can be freely downloaded from the website. <clears throat> that's also uh, the point where everything starts. So to, to see whether the microscope is actually working, I highly suggest to go to the website. And um, oh, I already opened it, so I should rather go and open a new thing. Oh, sorry, maybe a new, new thing. Um, and then I go to uc2.zipzap.io <clears throat> and then you could flash the firmware. So that uh, is the, uh, the, the best way to get an updated version of the firmware. Uh, we'll skip that version right now, uh, even though the firmware is actually a little bit old, but it still works. Um, also, if you cancel it, it suggests to you how to install the drivers. And then um, what we actually want to do is uh, go to testing the firmware. <coughs> and then you connect to the board, which is right now the COM4, so CP2102. And then <coughs> uh, we can uh, test the firmware, so you can eventually also change the baud rate, uh, which should be fine. Right now it's an older firmware, the newer one is uh, at 500,000 bouts. 
Um, and then you can turn on, for example, the light, which right now is uh, on the laser port. Okay, this was a long story. <laughs> so actually the baud rate was already at 500,000. So you change that at baud rate to change, then it will automatically uh, take it. Then you can um, change the hardware. So now the LED is turned on and off. That was kind of funny, it was a bit unexpected. Um, and then you can also move around the, the sample. Now this is the X direction, this is the Y direction. And the way it works is that you have um, JSON commands, so you can spot them here. Um, and so, for example, if I want to move the stage faster in, for example, uh, direction uh, x, x is number one, uh, a is um, zero, two is y, and z is three, then we say now 100,000 steps, uh, 225,000 um, speed, then it moves at full speed and maybe well, doesn't know that this was zero, so that's a very good explanation uh, for why it's important to do the homing. So let's do the homing. Um, so the uh, firmware is described elsewhere. So I'll just uh, copy the parts here where we have um, home dot uh, underscore add, act. So we act on the home. Um, use it on step one, one timeout in case um, there's nothing hit like a sensor is two, uh, after 20 seconds. The speed is at 50,000. And then the direction, I know it's uh, the other direction. Let me do it a bit faster so then uh, it will just go in the other direction and then once it's hitting the end stop, it will just stop and then automatically also uh, zeros the axis to be zero. So it should arrive there. We we'll do the same thing for the y axis. Um, so this is step ID number two and then it moves uh, to this step um, axis here and then um, automatically zeros it. And then uh, for the y axis, um, we do have actually two motors, which is uh, axis number zero and also axis number three. So to move, move both at the same time, because the firmware right now doesn't know that we have a dual axis system, um, we will not use the homing, but the, the actual motor act. So we use uh, probably this command. And since it's a JSON command, we can just, uh, well, inside this one list, just create another one and then have zero and uh, three as a Stepper ID move at uh, a certain speed, 1,000 steps up. So if it's slightly not visible, so we'll just do it again. So with um, a minus 10,000 because we are already at the lower end. So let's do that now. So this here and then also there. And then motor will go up. And then if we go down again, we just have to negate it um, and then moves down again. Um, I think that's most of the parts that we want to so from the firmware, from the interaction side, what's also nice is um, you can get your um, PS4 controller working with this device. Uh, so you hit share and connect at the same time. As long as the, this thing starts flashing, so then it's looking for connections, you hit the BT pairing button and then uh, the firmware will do its magic so that it will connect to the device automatically. And then once it stops blinking or flashing and uh, has a continuous light, you know, aha, it's uh, connected. And then you can move the microscope around. Uh, don't be too fast because it doesn't know that it lo it's losing steps. So then uh, the absolute position is being lost. So then you can move. That was too fast already, so it lost steps. Um, and then you can move the sample around. Also in, in the z-axis, it actually knows that it's a dual axis system. And then you can go to the Galaxy Viewer. So I'm just closing that so that you know how it's actually looking like. So we open the Galaxy um, Viewer, open the camera that's being connected. Probably fully overexposed, so that's, oh, that's not the case. That's good. Um, make that a little larger. And then also bring the sample to focus. So So we can move around the sample with the uh, uh, joypad. So X, Y is uh, just moving around. And uh, so right now we are spotting some random samples. So uh, this is, for example, the technical slide uh, to, to calibrate your camera. Um, well, the camera is actually rotated. So this is uh, also a good tool to see whether it's actually straight because the axis should move straight. Um, so we move it X and well, right now in Z. 
then you can also spot well that was like this uh, noise of we lost um, steps that's actually also another piece the sample is slightly tilted so that's why we have different foci different positions so I'm correct for that one and then also the next one is a um, uh, histological slide so we sh can then see different um, parts of the sample so here I guess it's some muscle tissue um, some cells here and there um, some more I think this is like the edge of the sample um, lots of dust here and there on the surface of the sample uh, and then we have one more which is a clinical sample um, where we should see some tissue maybe at the lower edges not quite so sure and here for example the overview camera from above would be very handy which right now is not installed but you can just use it uh, also in image switch is implemented here I see something some artifacts yeah, so you see this is really handy for moving the sample around to spot something I think the, also the, the logical slides make sense if they are uh, captured with the RGB camera I think this is um, also the a diatome sample so some parts are absolutely not sure what we're looking at right now it is something for sure um, moving around seeing something there's apparently <laughs> lots of dust now we're out of the ring. Where? And this is right now a 10x lens, um, but it can be swept with uh, other lenses as well, of course. Also, face contrast works, uh, just a matter of holding the objects properly. So. This was it. Um, I hope you at least learned how this microscope operates. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get uh, back to us and uh, we're very happy to answer questions and help you building one of those microscopes. So, see you soon and goodbye.